Hello and welcome to the 7th episode of my post-apocalyptic diorama build series. Today we're going to build this German pharmacy in ruins from Miniart. Let's start by cutting away the support plastic. We remove the remains with scissors and a knife. However, it is quite difficult to remove everything correctly, so we probably leave a hole or two. Now it's time to glue the pieces together. Yes, as said, the cutting process left a lot of holes. We will close them using putty in the next step. I don't work super accurate with the putty here, because it will match the broken look of the house and some holes won't be visible because of window frames anyway. After the putty has dried for a day we sand it down using various sand sticks. This will create a smooth area which can be painted easily. Finally, all parts can be assembled and are ready for the paint job. Time to get messy. I used a black primer firstly, but decide to go a different route with a gray primer so I can do some shading later on. Also, the gray is a better base than black. I create pre-shader effects using black and white colors just to try it out. They won't be visible later on, because I messed up the paint job a bit, you'll see soon what I mean. But firstly let us concentrate on the bricks. They can be painted each one individually, but I prefer the method using a sponge that is slightly pressed on the surface to paint the bricks. We paint the broken bricks in a more light color. Around 50% of the bricks are painted in different red, yellow and brown tones. This creates a more realistic look, because the bricks have never all the same color in reality.
Similar to the primer coat, we already sprayed the main colors onto the model. Later on I decided to use the chipping technique, thus I changed the colors to a darker tone, but forget to record that step on camera. On the back side I left the color as it is and use a white color for the chipping effect. As you can see, we changed the colors of the main coat and we are adding now the chipping fluid in two or three thin layers and let it dry for around 30 minutes before applying the main coat colors again. A toothpick is used to mark the areas where the chipping effect will be the strongest. A hard brush soaked in water is used to remove the color and create the chipping effect. The edges and corners are painted with the underlying color and connected with the chipped areas. We use a light color like Iraqi sand from Vallejo to mark the edges of the broken facade. More edge highlighting is done using the dry brush method. Different filter colors are used to mark several sections of the building. The effect is really subtle, as the filter color is a highly diluted color, which will create a worn out effect. Unfortunately I forgot which colors I used, so no color information this time. Sorry. Now it's time for our pharmacy sign to shine. We add a brass tone as undercoat color, which will be visible under the main blue color using the chipping technique once again.
The overpainting is removed using a small round brush. Let's take a short break from our house and take a look at some accessories we want to create for the post-apocalyptic diorama. I don't know if they will be part of the finished house or just standing nearby. So firstly let's create this lovely crate. After the main coat has dried we give the crate a heavy wash. The joints are filled using a highly diluted color. This will create a sense of depth. The same mixture can also be used to create some areas of dirt at the right spots. Last but not least highlights are created by painting various light wood colors at the edges of the crate. Another thing that has to be built are these windows. I want to make this somehow special and an eye-catcher. Now the windows can get their well-deserved bath. After around 10 to 15 minutes the plastic will be easily bentable. This way, we can create a very realistic look.
Well, that was a bit too strong. I'm going to fix this later on using some glue. After the primer has dried, we applied a mahogany tone and now we are using a sponge to apply a lighter wood tone. Next we add a few decals. They don't come with this kit and I honestly didn't decide at which time the diorama is in. The building is at least intended for a World War II diorama, but I use a lot of modern elements later on. Maybe the diorama is from an alternative reality? A sponge is used to fade in the decals and make them really part of the building's surface. After applying glossy varnish, we are washing the whole building using a green-brown wash color. We remove the wash with a cotton swab dipped in enamel thinner. This will remove most of the wash color, leave a realistic and subtle effect. We sprinkle various colors onto the building with the help of a toothpick. The letters get a more rusty tone using a light rust wash. In the next step, we add some random spots using oil colors. After a short drying time the color is blended using a brush that is dipped in thinner. This will create subtle color changes and will make the building look more realistic, because it stands nearby water.
Next we create streaks using oil colors. The bricks didn't get as much love as they deserve. So let's take care of that next. We mix different pigments using airbrush thinner and pigment fixer from Vallejo. The pigment mixture is then added between the bricks. I repeat this as many times as necessary using different pigments to create a realistic look. After around 12 hours of drying time, the pigments are removed from the bricks, leaving the mixture only between them. The pigments can be removed easily using water and a makeup sponge or similar. Remember the windows we painted before? Now it's time to attach them. They are quite a hard fit, but I eventually managed to fix them where they belong. I had the idea to add some broken glass in the windows. For that purpose, cell phone protection glass is prepared with some pigments. If you try this at home, please don't be stupid as me and use your finger for that. Well, it isn't the most realistic look, but I still like it. How about you? Please tell me in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. The back side of the building also needs some more love. We add some parts of the second floor using these wooden fences, which are made of polystyrene and are pre-painted. Pre-painted or not, I didn't like how they look, so let's add some more colors to satisfy my need for dirty things.
I would say they look better now and are ready to be attached to the building. We added some loose bricks and debris and fixed that using special rubble glue, that won't change the colors after it has dried completely. Different pigments will finish the look and feel of the building. Well, I might add more nature effects when I'm going to install it on the diorama. But that's something for a different episode. Here is the final result for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and please consider subscribing and leave a like. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.